All right, we're going to do a few more examples of problems involving friction. And hopefully, after this, you'll have a very good understanding of how to do problems that involve friction. All right, now you should have the concepts of friction down. So let's do a couple more examples. And let's look at this one here. And it's a little bit more complicated because not only are we using Newton's second law, but we will have to use Newton's third law as well. So again, our first principles are Newton's second law and Newton's third law. So here we have a block with a mass M1 equal to three kilograms is placed on top of a block of mass M2 equal to six kilograms. And there's friction between the two blocks. And we're given that a horizontal force of 15 newtons applied to the top block just makes it slide on the secondary bottom block. So that's telling us that the maximum static friction will be just less than 15 newtons. So if we apply 15 newtons, it causes it to slide. So that's our maximum static friction for block one sitting on block two. Now, the two are placed on a frictionless table. So part A, we want to find the maximum force F that can be applied to the bottom block so that the top one does not slide and the two will move together. And then we want to find what that acceleration will be. All right, so let's think about this for a minute. There's actually a couple of ways that we can do, uh, go to solve this. So we're only going to pull on the bottom block. So that means if the top one is going to move with the bottom one, the friction has to supply the force on the top one to keep it moving with the bottom one. So that means the friction from the bottom block on the top block has to point in the direction of motion or to the right. And then Newton's third law tells us that there's a reaction force acting on the bottom block from the friction acting on M1. And that reaction force is equal and opposite. So the bottom block will have a force from the top one on it to the left. That's the reaction force. So that's applying Newton's third law, action reaction law. So let's draw a free body diagram and see what these look like. Now remember, the only force acting on the top one, M1, is the friction from M2 acting on M1. And if we want M1 to move to the right, that means that frictional force has to push M1 to the right to keep it with the bottom block M2. All right, so then the reaction force to that friction will act on M2 in the opposite direction. Remember, Newton's third law is the action-reaction law. Those forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. One force acts on M1 to the right, and one acts on M2 to the left. So now in the bottom, I've drawn a free body diagram for block two. So we have our applied force F to the right, and now we have the maximum static friction to the left. We're using the maximum value because we want to find the maximum force that we can pull without M1 sliding. So now I just apply Newton's second law to M2. So the sum of the forces equals M2A. So we have F to the right minus the 15 Newtons from the friction to the left, and that's going to equal M2A. We also know that since the two blocks are going to move together, that force F is going to accelerate both M1 and M2 with the same acceleration. So right below that, I have F equals the sum of M1 and M2 times the acceleration. So I'll use that one to solve for the acceleration, and we get the acceleration equals our applied force over the sum of the two masses. Now I can plug that acceleration into the first equation. And so we get F minus the 15 Newtons equals M2 times that quantity of F over M1 plus M2. Now I solve for F 
and we get F equals 45 newtons. Now you can go through the algebra steps yourself, but I've broken it down into each step. But the end result is after I plug in all the numbers that our applied force can only be up to 45 newtons. If we do 45 newtons or greater, then M1 will slide. All right, then the second part, what is the acceleration? Well, now we know what the applied force is. Now it's easy to plug back in in our first or second equation and get the acceleration. All right, so we had solved for the acceleration as F over the sum M1 plus M2. So now we have a number for F, we can plug that in. So I've got the acceleration equals the 45 Newtons divided by three kilograms plus six kilograms, and we get the acceleration as five meters per second squared. So now we found both the maximum applied force and the acceleration so that the two blocks will move together without M1 sliding. Now I'm gonna show you another way that we could do this, and we get the same results, but a little bit less algebra. All right, so this problem is a little bit easier if we actually solve the second part first. So we note that the only force acting on M1, causing it to move to the right with M2, is the friction from M2 on M1. We are only pulling on the bottom block M2. So we do a free body diagram for M1, and we know the friction has to be to the right to make that block move to the right with the bottom one. And we want it at the maximum value, which was given as 15 Newtons. So we apply Newton's second law to M1, and we get the only force acting on it is the friction. That has to equal M1 times A, the acceleration. So now we get the acceleration equals the 15 Newtons divided by M1, and M1 was three kilograms, so that means the acceleration is five meters per second squared. All right, so now that we know the acceleration and they're both gonna move together, that's the acceleration for the whole two block system. So now it's very easy to find the maximum force. All right, so now to find the maximum force that we can pull, we already know what the maximum acceleration is going to be for the two block system. So we just do a free body diagram counting the two blocks together as one thing. So the total mass is M1 plus M2. The only force is the applied force since the friction between the two is internal to the system. We don't count that now. So the only external force is our applied force F. So that applied force is gonna be equal to the total mass M1 plus M2 times the acceleration. The total mass, we have three plus six kilograms, which is nine kilograms. The acceleration is five meters per second squared. So our maximum force is 45 Newtons. So notice we get the same results, but the, the second method here is just, we had a little bit less algebra to do, but we still get the same result. All right, we're gonna look at one more problem involving friction. All right, before we do the next example, I wanted to say a few words about inertial versus non-inertial reference frames. An inertial reference frame is one where Newton's laws hold. It would be a non-accelerating reference frame. A non-inertial reference frame is one where Newton's laws don't hold true. Any accelerating reference frame is a non-inertial reference frame. Here, mysterious forces can appear. So for example, suppose you were in the back of a van and there were no windows and the van was at rest. Well, suddenly the van started accelerating. Well, you would feel a force pushing you towards the back of the van. And if there were any objects sitting on the floor of the van, they may appear to slide towards the back of the van. So it looks like there's some mysterious force pushing the objects toward the back of the van and pushing you against your seat. Now, if we step outside the van, we see the real force is going on. You and the objects in the van want to remain at rest. And so while the van accelerates away, you and the objects want to remain at rest. And so 
they appear to go towards so the van back of the van will catch up to them so if you're going to that's why you feel the, the like you're being pushed into your seat the reality is is that the seat is pushing you to accelerate with the van the same thing is the friction between the the objects and the floor of the van is pushing on the objects toward the direction of the acceleration and if that friction is not static friction is not great enough the objects will slide towards the back but the friction is in the direction of the acceleration so if we stand outside then we can see the real forces all right so that's what's going to happen in the next example All right, so this example, we have a crate with a mass of 250 kilograms is loaded on the back of a truck. The coefficient of static friction between the crate and the truck bed is mu sub s. The truck slows down such that it comes to a stop from a speed of 60 miles per hour in a distance of 140 meters. How large must mu sub s, the coefficient of static friction, B so that the crate does not slide forward on the truck bed. All right, so let's think about this a minute. The truck is traveling at 60 miles per hour and they put on the brakes and it's going to slow down. So what about the crate? The crate is also traveling at 60 miles per hour and if the truck slows down, the crate will want to continue to move at 60 miles per hour. So if the truck would slow down, then the crate still traveling faster, it will smash into the back of the, of the cab of the pickup truck. So in order to keep the crate from sliding and crashing into the back of the cab, we have to have a force on the crate that makes it slow down at the same acceleration as the truck. Now, as we're slowing down, what direction is the acceleration? Well, the acceleration, of course, is in the opposite direction of the motion. So if the truck is moving forward and slowing down, the acceleration points towards the back. So there must be a force on the crate that points toward the back to give the crate the same acceleration of the truck. And that this force, of course, is the friction from the truck bed acting on the crate. And we want that frictional force, that static friction, to be large enough to make the crate slow down at the same acceleration of the truck. Okay, so I'm pointing this out because my years of teaching, I've discovered at least half the class gets the wrong direction for the friction force in these types of problems. So remember, the only force acting on the crate is the friction between the truck bed and the crate and that friction acting on the crate. So if the crate is going to stay with the truck, that friction has to supply the same acceleration to the crate that the truck has. And so that force has to point in the direction of the acceleration, which is toward the back of the truck. All right, so here's a crude picture of what's going on. We have this truck in blue and we have our crate in the back. Now the truck is moving to the right, but it's slowing down. All right, so first of all, what direction is the acceleration? Well, if the truck is moving to the right and slowing down, the acceleration is going to be to the left. All right, so we want to mark that in our drawing. All right, so the acceleration is to the left because we're slowing down. The acceleration is going to be opposite the direction of the velocity when we're slowing down. Okay, so when we apply Newton's second law, the sum of the forces equals ma, our acceleration is to the left. Okay, now notice that the box in the back of the truck, the only force acting on it is friction. So the friction has to give the box the same acceleration as the truck if it's going to stay on the bed and not slide. So if the box is not going to slide, it has to have that same acceleration to the left. And the only force we have is friction.
So what direction is the friction going to point? The frictional force, of course, has to point to the left to give the box the same acceleration as the truck. So the frictional force has to point in the direction of the acceleration. So if we have the maximum static friction to the left. We're using the maximum value because we want to find the maximum coefficient of friction that we need. Then I've also put in the weight down and the normal force from the truck bed on the crate up. So this, right below the truck here, we have the free body diagram for the crate. We have the normal force up, the weight down, and the friction points to the left because the frictional force has to give the crate the same acceleration as the truck. So we need our static friction maximum value to be greater than or equal to the, ma the mass of the box times the acceleration of the truck if it's not going to slide. We see that the normal force is equal to the weight in this case since we have no other vertical forces. So we have mu sub s times the normal force has to be greater than or equal to the mass of the box times a or mu sub s mg has to be greater than to the mass of the box times a. Notice that the mass of the box divides out. It doesn't depend on the mass of the box. All right, that's very interesting. You would think that it would depend on the mass of the box when you first read the problem, but we see that it divides out. So the coefficient of static friction has to be greater than or equal to the acceleration of the truck over g. So as long as our static friction coefficient is greater than a over g, the crate will not slide. All right, so now we need to find a, the acceleration of the truck. So we're given that we go from 60 miles per hour, which I've converted to 27 meters per second, down to zero in a distance of 140 meters. So we can apply our kinematic equations to find the acceleration. And remember, we had a kinematic equation that eliminated the time, and that was v squared equals v naught squared minus 2a delta x. Well, our final velocity is zero, and our initial velocity is 27 meters per second. The delta x is 140 meters, and so we get a equals v naught squared over 2 delta x. We plug in the numbers and we get the acceleration of 2.6 meters per second squared. So now our coefficient of friction must be greater than or equal to 2.6 over 9.8, which is 0.27. So as long as the coefficient of static friction is greater than 0.27, the box will not slide. But again, I just want to point out so that you understand this, that when we're in standing outside the truck in an inertial reference frame, we see that as the truck slows down, the box wants to continue moving at the high rate of speed. So the friction has to point in the direction of the acceleration to make the box slow down with the truck and have the same acceleration as the truck. So in our free body diagram, the only force acting horizontally on the box is the friction. And so that has to point in the direction of the acceleration towards the back of the truck. All right, so that's the end of this video. In the next videos, we're going to look at circular motion and centripetal forces. Now we may do some more friction with those as well, but this is the last video that I'm doing for pure friction problems. Hi, Dr. C here. I want to ask you to please help support this channel. There are a number of links in the video description to Amazon.com. If you purchase any items from Amazon by entering through these links, even if it's not one of the items listed, I will receive a small commission that helps to produce more content. There is no additional cost to you whatsoever. Also, please leave your comments, questions, or suggestions below. I want to thank you for support of this channel and please subscribe. I hope you find my videos useful.